Last week we were having a pretty easy time of it. After casually exploring the Morton National Park, we relaxed at Cullendale Campground by the Shoalhaven River. We took a load off and enjoyed swimming, fishing and kayaking before pulling up stumps and heading south. Now it's a brand new day and we've been joined by locals Aaron, Simo and Tamara. Enthusiastic local off-roaders who are going to guide us through the hardest tracks in the region, Mintbush and Monkey Gum. We're all champing at the bit to do some real off-roading and properly challenge our vehicles. So let's hit the tracks. Your 4x4 is brought to you by Iveco, Trek Hardware, ARB, Cooper, Piranha and Nava. Before the fun had even begun, Mike from Trek would have to get some issues fixed with his Hilux as well as find somewhere to stash his trailer. He'd meet us further along down the track. All right, well, we've been led to the start of Mintbush Trail. This is going to be the hardest track of the trip. I'm really looking forward to it. Time to get on the trails. Local knowledge, as we all know, is a really important thing. And I guess, is that something you can't go past? We had two guys with us, Aaron and Simo. They had a BT-50 and an old Hilux. I started off in a patrol about five years ago and just started following other people down and now, you know, we've got our own four-wheel drive crew, so we try to get down here as much as we can. Mate, the tracks are, it's as easy as hard as you want to make it sort of thing. Pretty much from the get-go, it's a good few rock steps, decent flex track about halfway down. So if you've got an IFS truck, you'll, you'll be lifting wheels. And then Monkey Gum, it's got a bit of a reputation. So yeah, that's no, a good track. Mintbush Trail leads us down to the bottom, to the creek, where it jumps across, goes up to Monkey Gum. The most fun track of the trip. Probably the hardest, plenty of different options though. And a beautiful lookout at the top. Before heading deeper into the track, Jake was excited to show the group the latest addition to his track clearing arsenal. Just, and it's just, um, it's just good to go. Good to go. Hot. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Well, between my chopper, Simon saw and your saw, yeah. we're environmentally friendly. Yeah, we can decimate much, the yeah. bush. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we can just decimate the bush. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got no food with Mick broken down. No, I've got all the foods on there. Oh, okay. It's all good. No one knows no what, what to do with yeah. it. The weather's actually a little bit kinder to us today. It's not so hot. It's about sort of low 20s. There's a bit of cloud cover, which is perfect for this. It's quite an easy track, but fairly rutted out and a few rock steps and so forth. You've just got to watch your line as you come down, that's all. And if you've got a bit of overhang at the back, you can certainly get hung up. There's plenty of cars on the track. We came across three different groups on the way down. We let past and then they let us past. What's incredible is it's in New South Wales and it's not closed, it's not locked off. There's no gates, you're open to use it any time you like. Yeah, Jeff. Hello, sweethearts. Thank you. 
come to this beautiful campground down here in amongst another bunch of tracks and it's a glorious area. We've had to prepare the smoker for ourselves this morning so we're a little bit lost without Mick. He's actually had to head off because his Hilux has had a few little dramas but he's going to rejoin us later on in the day. Okay, so it's all fixed Michael? Oh that's great. Take the fork down to the right. You'll see us in the campground down there. And that's only a taste of the challenges Mint Bush and Monkey Gum have in store for us. Easily the hardest tracks this trip will throw our way. We'll be spreading our coverage of the Battle Up the Hills over several episodes, because trust me, you need to give these tracks their due. Join us after the break as we continue exploring the central south coast of New South Wales. Jumping forward to day five of the trip, we've woken to a radiant sunrise at Jarvis Bay. We can't enjoy it for too long though, as Danny has brought some unsettling news to my attention, resulting in a re-evaluation of our plans. So Danny, what did we have planned for today? Well, we were heading out to Yadra Flat, but they're closing the campground. Not gonna be open due to the extreme fire risk. The weather's been extreme, lots of wind, there's fires in the, the southwest of the area that we're in now, but they're, they're moving sort of easterly and northerly, so they're, they're taking the, uh, the precaution of closing the campgrounds. So we definitely can't go out there, can't stay overnight. And it's not worth taking the risk anywhere through this forest area? Absolutely not. With the winds that we've been seeing, uh, could change direction any time, could be looking for a way out. What have you got planned for us as an alternative? Lake Conjole is a good area. We were staying there for one night. There are some drives, there are some things we can do on the lake. I think the guys will like it. Pretty relaxing compared to monkey gum. Well, monkey gum was pretty extreme. I think the guys have had a fantastic hardcore day, so a little bit of scenic touring might yeah. be on the go. They've earned it. Here in the Tirunjara Falls, as you can see, bone dry. Not a skerrick of water around anywhere. In actual fact, not far from us are some bushfires that are burning out of control. The wind here is probably pushing around maybe 50, 60 knots, and it's changed our plans for this trip of where we're gonna go. We gotta be extremely cautious and understand where we are, which we've done. We've got a honeymoon couple on this trip with us, Alan and Barb Johnson. You know, they've been probably together now, I reckon, for close on 30, 40, maybe 50 years. I've got to be careful there. They always love taking photos. There's nothing better than taking a photo of someone when they think they're getting photographed and you're actually going, like at me, like at me. And they thought they were fantastic photos. So there's about 600 on their phone. mile road this morning was a it was a fairly easy little bit bumpy track which run through uh, an old artillery firing range the last thing you want to do is be wandering off because apparently there's a lot of unexploded grenades bombs that sort of thing there in the early days they didn't have all this GPS technology so what they used to have to do is use range finders. So the idea was to find if the missiles were going to go in the right place or the bombs were going to go in the right place, you actually had to physically launch the things. And supposedly on both sides of the road, according to all the safety signs, there's unexploded ordnance, which makes this a very interesting track. The whole concept of going off-road is an absolute no-no. An easy four-wheel drive track, we put it into high range but it really didn't need anything more than that, it was just a bit of a bumpy dirt road. A few people just stopped to jump out and were quickly yelled at through the CBs to jump back into the vehicles. It's a sort of road that's very picturesque but you stay on the road. 
lots and lots of dust again, unfortunately. Where's Mick? That damn trailer with all those wheels in it makes more dust than I've ever seen before. Our reward for surviving the dangers and the dust of 12 mile road was yet another jaw dropping vista. As the clear blue sky and smoky black clouds battled it out on the horizon, all we could do was cross our fingers and hope that better conditions were to come. After a cruisy drive through the bush, the convoy arrived at a very special lookout. One of the highlights of the trip, as far as lookouts go, was the George Boyd lookout that we found. We're now at George Boyd lookout where we've just had some lunch, and it really makes you appreciate the beautiful Australian bushland that we've got around here. Some pretty specky views behind me. Seen a lot of tourists on the road out here today, checking out the views, checking out the lookouts, and it's great to see people out and about. We have got a fire burning in the area. Hopefully we're heading in the opposite direction to that and it's not going to cause too much problems for us. As you can probably see, there's a bucket load of smoke out there. A huge percentage of New South Wales is currently on fire and we're sort of sitting at the top of it looking at it. We're pretty safe from here because in the old way of testing the wind, it's blowing that way away from us. Good thing. When you're out in the bush, it's always important to keep up to date on the latest fire information. Be prepared with your state's fire service app and stay safe. So unfortunately for me, this is my last day with the convoy. Duty calls, I've got to get back to the office. It's been an absolutely fantastic experience travelling with your 4x4 crew and all the sponsors. Some great people, some great company and some really great times. The George Boyd Lookout also provided us with a lovely picnic area and some fun caves to explore. But now it was time to hit the tracks. It was a long way to go to get to our destination, so we took the shortcut through the bush and down the tight and winding Conjola Creek Road. We came into the forest, had a look around at some easy tracks. Headed down to Conjola Creek Road. This is an amazing little fire trail. I've got the trailer on back, which is always a bit of a challenge, but amazing on those big 35s. When you let the pressure down, it just glided over everything we put it through. Absolutely essential that it makes it there because it's got the crib on top. I definitely don't want to be sleeping with the boys. With more and more smoke in the air and the day fading, we made our way towards Ingenia Holidays, a caravan and holiday park on Lake Conjola. This would be a safe place for us to hunker down in case we had to change our plans again. Uh, my name is Crystal and we're in Genie Holidays Lake Condola. Our main clientele are families with young children, travellers just looking for a nice campsite and also for the grey nomads with their caravans who like to park up on the lake and fish and relax. The lake is a major attraction for water sports and the fishing is fantastic. We often get a lot of guests up at the office telling us about their great catch of the day. I really think there's an excellent place to get away, particularly for young families. I took a, a snorkel out here this morning. The water is now more than a metre deep, so it's very safe for kids. We have very family-friendly facilities. We have a resort-style pool. We have a splash park. We have toddler's games room. We have a very large jumping pillow. Very quiet, with all the kids are at school. But I can imagine the school holidays, this place is absolutely packed. It's got so much to offer, the water, the beach, and that the weather is a bit inclement, you've got a very nice water park, got a nice artificial beach, so you feel like you're actually at the beach, which is great. It's the great Australian dream to work in the city and own a little south coaster. People often pack up on a Friday afternoon and come down for the weekend and enjoy the coast. We were fortunate enough to spend the night in one of Lake Conjola's many fantastic villas, which included nice warm beds, a full kitchen and that all-important luxury air conditioning. But we were still itching to get back out on the tracks. 
you are looking to visit us here in Lake Conjola, go to our website at ingeniaholidayslakeconjola.com.au and we would love to see you here in Lake Conjola. It was a quiet morning in Lake Conjola and our neighbours weren't exactly in a hurry to get up and go anywhere. But our group? Well, we had places to be and some more last minute changes to make. So our plans today have changed. The fires have got more intense, gotten bigger, overnight spread. They've jumped the river, jumped the Princess Highway into where we were going to camp for the next couple of days. I've come up with a plan for the day, a fairly simple day, relatively close tracks. The group will get to go up a few lookouts probably get to see how the fire situation is, get a good view of the area, up to a lake, they probably have lunch there, turn around, a couple of different tracks on the way back, and meet me back at camp this afternoon. So I'll stay here for the day, look at the maps, I'll come up with an alternative to keep the convoy rolling. Good morning convoy and welcome to day six. Now unfortunately Rob from our has departed last night and we've got Daniel on board, so can you bring welcome Daniel? Welcome on board, Daniel. Thanks, guys. Really looking forward to it. So, uh, my name's Dan. I'm local to Canberra. Been four-wheel driving for the last six to eight years, I think, of uh, basically since I could drive. Just taking over from Rob in the Big Sandy 76. Touring through the Morton National Park was a great experience, with tree-lined trails and plenty of beautiful rock features to take in. I did spur a thought though for poor Danny, locked away in his hotel room with his maps and his notes all on his own. <laughs> Knowing he was missing out for our sake, we made the most of our day trip with a visit to the gorgeous Pointer Gap lookout. Once you get to the top, you come out to this beautiful escarpment. You can see the ocean and it just makes you realise how fortunate people are coming down to this area because an hour's drive you up and you can look over the, the whole coastal region. Oh, it's not giving you... Can you hold of in? No. Right down that way. Wrecked bay. We could also see the bushfires to the south of us because we really go to actually get an understanding of the scale of the bushfires that are down there. You just see massive areas of, of smoke. This part of the central south coast of New South Wales is just amazing. Beautiful turquoise water, the rivers are pristine, crystal clear. This is a spot you want to get up and have a look at. Amazing camping spots. Every little turn you take and go to the next cove, there's a beautiful white sandy beach. Really white sand, beautiful blue water. Without the wind, it'd be absolutely beautiful down here. Lovely white crystal clear sands. The surf wasn't too big. There are some warnings about currents, but I didn't see any evidence of that it looked really safe.
Thanks for joining us. Next week, you'll catch us fishing as friends, kayaking as competitors, and scrambling to make new plans, as well as plenty of four-wheeling action as we head deeper into the Mintbush Trail. See you then on another episode of Your 4x4.